Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it looks like that much rumored Silent Hill game has had some images leak. And we have the latest NPD cell numbers for April. We have those topics and more to cover. But before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. That's the best way to let me know you enjoy the content on this channel. Now let's get started. So there's been this rumor for a while that a new Silent Hill game is being worked on and it looks like some of the images from it may have leaked. We have this headline from VGC, leaked images appear to show a new British Silent Hill. Images shared by a known insider have been removed in a copyright claim. Aesthetic Gamer, previously known as Dust Gollum, posted four images of what they claimed were a Silent Hill leak, adding that while they originated from a source that was new to them, they had been given more than enough proof to believe them. Within hours, the pictures were removed from Twitter and replaced with a message stating this image has been removed in response to a report from the copyright holder. And we have a look here at that tweet and the removed images. But through the magic of the internet is forever via the internet archive, here's a copy with the actual images in it. Now the user that leaked these did say that they were from 2020 and some of its concept art, so the final game may look a bit different. But the fact that these images were DMCA and the user actually was locked out of their account for a little while pretty much leads us all to believe that this is legit. Next, let's take a look at the NPD cells in the US for the month of April. So generally most of these numbers aren't very good. You can see here that total video game sales are down 8% in April compared to April of last year and also 8% down for the year to date. And then software sales are down 10% compared to April of last year and down 8% for year to date. Now video game hardware is actually up 16% when compared to April of last year, but year to date it's still down 9%. And some notes to go along with this, the Nintendo Switch featured the highest unit sales of any hardware platform for both April and the year to date. Xbox sales ranked second in units sold during both time periods, which would leave the PlayStation 5 in third place. Now another interesting note, the Switch has passed the PS4 in lifetime sales in the US and is now the fourth best-selling console behind the PS2, Xbox 360, and the Wii. Now let's take a look at individual software sales for April video games as a whole. The Lego Skywalker Saga comes in first as a new entry on the list, as well as Nintendo Switch Sports coming in at fifth. And again, a caveat on all these numbers, none of these include the digital sales from Nintendo, as well as the digital sales for MLB The Show 22 on the Xbox. And now let's flip over to the year-to-date sales. Of course, Elden Ring is still in the top spot, but LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga did make it up to two. And I do have to point out that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe did slip two spots to number 10. And let's take a look at individual systems. On the Switch you have LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga at number 1, and we have Nintendo Switch Sports coming in new at number 3, and of course MLB The Show 22 made it in right at the end at number 10. When we look at the PlayStation numbers, again you have LEGO at the top, but here MLB The Show 22 managed to come in second for April. And then hitting the highlights over on Xbox, again LEGO's at the top, and you have Godfall coming in new at number 8. And then I can't help but notice that two-fifths of the entries here belong to a Call of Duty game. And this does reaffirm how well LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga did on all three platforms. And I wasn't too surprised to see the Xbox Series systems coming in ahead of the PlayStation 5. 
from every information we've had leading up to this, it seems like the PlayStation 5 has had a bit of trouble with production. And I know we've talked a lot of numbers this week. Most of the companies are wrapping up the end of their fiscal year and have been providing numbers to their investors. Well, we've got a little more comparison here from the company NewZoo, which is a games market inside an analytic company. And when you look at this graph they provided, you can get a real idea of how big each company is compared to each other. Now you have the numbers from 2020 in green and the most recent ones from 2021 in blue. And these are all based on revenue. And you can see here Tencent is way ahead at the very front of everyone. And interestingly enough, Sony went down just a little bit but probably some of that has to do with manufacturing costs for the PlayStation 5 and I would expect them to recoup that in the future. Now I do find it interesting that Apple is in here in third place even though they don't really make any games or own any game companies. This is just their cut from iOS devices and software sold through their app store. And then Microsoft is here in fourth with a pretty big amount of growth at 9.6%. But then I want to skip down to Nintendo here in eighth place. And Nintendo did grow 1.9%. But to get an idea of how the acquisitions in the upcoming year are going to affect this number, they released this chart here combining the companies that are going to be merging. Once this happens, Microsoft with Activision Blizzard will be the second biggest gaming company. And I think that really emphasizes just how big of an acquisition that was. Now down toward the end of this graph, you have the combination of Take-Two and Zynga, which will put them in the top 10. However, I don't think anyone is going to catch Tencent anytime soon. And finally, Nintendo has added another Nintendo 64 game to the Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. This coming from their official account, inhale enemies and combine their abilities in Kirby's Adventure Beyond Dreamland. Dozens of puffed up special powers await you in Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, floating onto Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack members on May 20th. Now I've not personally played this Kirby game. I know a lot of them were more designed for younger kids, but I plan to try it out when this comes out on Friday and this just re-emphasizes how Nintendo is just going to continue to add software slowly to the service and so far the strategy has seemed to work for them. Now while Nintendo has not given the exact number of people that switched up to the more expensive expansion pack in the United States, they at least indicated that that ratio was extremely high. And that's all we have for today. Did anything we talk about catch your attention? Were you surprised just how big Microsoft will be after they acquire Activision Blizzard? And were you beginning to think that the Silent Hill rumor was not real? Drop a comment about that or anything else we discussed today. I want to thank you for watching and be good.